Oh, well, I wake up in the morning and I want a juicy steak and so I cook it for a minute because I know that's all it takes to make comedy in the rock. Comedy in the rock. Comedy in the rock. Maybe I shouldn't watch this show. No, 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 no. Maybe I'll become an Eskimo. Eskimo, Eskimo. Maybe I'll just watch my toenails grow. Maybe I'll just shut up. And watch comedy in the rock, comedy in the rock. Low Budget Cable Access Productions presents Smart Ass Jeopardy, the show where you don't have to be smart, you just have to be a smart ass. Our contestants are now entering the studio, a smart ass divorce lawyer from Hollywood, California, Gary Tipton. A smart ass postal employee and mother of two from Akron, Ohio, Amy Reeves. And our returning champion, a smart-ass college student from Bloomington, Indiana, Michael Wilson. His three-day cash winnings total $12.83. And now, here's your low-budget host, Alex Trebek's illegitimate half-brother, Barry Trebek. Thank you, Johnny Gilbert. Welcome, players, and let's get started. Our categories are celebrity couples, MTV, has-beens, Eternal Damnation, and our audio category, Rock Stars Snuffing It. Michael, you're a returning champion, so you select first. I'll pay celebrity couples for 100, Barry. The answer is, it's how David Copperfield got Claudia Schiffer. Michael. What is he put her under a hypnotic spell? Sorry, incorrect. Gary. What is he made a deal with the devil? Ooh, good guess, but no. Amy. What is he hung like a moose? David Copperfield? Sorry. The correct response is, what is she likes rich guys no matter how ugly they are? Ah, oh, geez. Michael, select again. A celebrity couple, 200. The answer is, it's how Lyle Lovett got Julia Roberts. Amy. What is he slightly less disgusting than Keeper Sutherland? Correct. Amy, select again. I'll take celebrity couples for $300, please, Barry. It's how Tom Arnold got Roseanne Arnold. Michael. What is he bought her at a cattle auction? Correct. Michael, select again. I'll take celebrity couples for 400. How Rick Ocasek got Paulina Poroskova. Amy. Because he's high like a moose. Sorry, incorrect. Michael or Gary? Sorry, Amy. You had the correct response, but you didn't phrase it in the form of a question. Mm. Yeah, you're Barry. Right back at ya. I'll take celebrity couples for $500. How Donald Trump got Marla Maples. Gary, what is he bought her? More specific, what is he bought her off the street like a common prostitute because she's a cheap little money-grubbing slut? Correct. I'll take MTV for 200. Ding, 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 ding. That's our video daily double, Gary. You can wager all or part of your earnings. How much would you like to wager? I'll bet it all, Barry. Okay, listen first to the clue and then watch the video screen. The category is MTV, and the answer is the reason why Eddie Vedder of Pearl Jam is contorting his face so horribly in this video. Let's watch. What is he's a tortured artist who's putting all his emotional energy into his performance? Oh, sorry. The correct response was, what is he was pinching off a loaf? Gary, looks like you're out of all your money, but there's still plenty of time left. Gary, select again. I'll take has-beens for 100. This politician is really a has-been. Amy. Who is Dan Quayle? Dan Quayle? A has-been? No way. He's a hot commodity. What? what? I'm joking. Amy, you're correct. Amy, please select. Has-been, 200. This male pop star is really, really a has-been. Gary. Who is Barry Manilow? Sorry, Gary, not who we were looking for. Amy. Who is Ray Parker Jr.? Who is Ray Parker Jr.? Well, you know the guy that sang that Ghostbuster song? Oh, oh yeah. yeah! Well, he wasn't the answer we had, but we got to give you credit for that one, Amy. Select. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll take has-been for 300. This female vocalist is totally a has-been. Amy. Who is Tiffany? No. Gary or Michael? Michael. Who is Debbie Gibson? Yes, but we're not going to give you credit for it because we think you're winning way too much money. Well, that's okay, Barry. Your wife will make it up to me. <laughs> I'll take uh, has-been for 400. The answer is this actor has got to be the biggest has-been in the universe. Michael. Who is Eric Estrada? 
Ooh, incorrect. Remember, we're looking for an actor. Amy. Who is Dom DeLuise? Correct. Although Dom does give one heck of an erotic massage. Michael, select again. Hey, it's my turn. Life is hard. Unlike you last night. I'll take has-beens for 500. This radio personality is totally a has-been. Gary. Who is Rick Dees? Hey, watch what you say about Rick Dees. Disco Duck was the coolest song ever. Fight me. In your wet dreams, pal. Michael or Amy? Michael. Uh, who is... Rick Dees? <laughs> <laughs> Couple of comedians, eh? Well, we've just discovered a slight scoring error, and it looks like each one of you guys is minus two million dollars. What do you think about that? I think you need a good butt kicking. Ooh, I'm so scared. Michael, select again. Let me try Rockstar snuffing it for 100. Our audio category. Listen to the audio clues and identify the rock and roller you hear snuffing it. Buying the farm, fighting the big one, croaking. And for $100, the answer is... <laughs> Gary. Who is Keith Moon? Correct. Select again. I'll take Rockstar snuffing it for 200 <coughs> Yoko, I could never stand your bloody singing. Amy. Uh, who is John Lennon? Yes. I'll try Eternal Damnation for 100 We tell you the star, you tell us the way he or she should spend an eternity in hell. For $100, the answer is that kid who plays Steve Urkel. Amy. What is round-the-clock hot coffee enemas? Correct. I'll take Eternal Damnation for 200 The answer is Barney the Dinosaur. Michael. What is roasting eternally over a pit of volcanic flatulence? Sorry, incorrect. Gary. What is being tied up and forced to watch reruns of the Barney the Dinosaur show? Correct. Oh, Eternal Damnation for 300 The answer is... Willard Scott. Michael. What is a never-ending orgy with all those 100-year-olds he thinks are so beautiful? Oh, correct. Uh, what the? Hey, now. Well, you folks better wrap this show up directly now. I guarantee. Ooh, we, we're going to be cooking some mighty fine cordads and jambalaya. Well, it's one thing. <laughs> it would appear that we've run out of time and have to yield the studio to the Cajun cooking show that comes on after us. And with both of our men at minus two million dollars, that means Amy Reeves, our postal employee, is the new champion of Smart Ass Jeopardy, with a grand total of three dollars and eleven cents. Hey, I've got four hundred dollars. I've been keeping track. So sue us. I'll sue him for you. Hey, I say we take it out of his scrawny hide. Good I idea. We blow him away. Now, come on, everybody. Come here. Come on. Come come on. Come on. Hello, I'm Mark Curry with the Music News. The tragic loss of the Crown Prince of Grunge, Karma's lead singer Kirk Fontaine, has left a major void in the music scene. Many speculate that his death may even have sounded the death knell for the entire grunge movement, leaving a generation without a voice. Today we'll look at a band called Smashing Watermelons, a group that hopes to pick up where Karma left off. Backstage with Smashing Watermelons, we spoke with their manager, Ernie Flagg, about the daunting prospect of replacing a musical phenomenon like Karma. But they're a great group of kids. I mean, we were all devastated by Kurt Fontaine's death. We were all big Karma fans. But hey, life goes on. Can we replace Karma? No. No one can replace them. But we can build on their success with a newer, younger grunge sound. It's like karma to the nth power. Do you feel that you're capitalizing on Kirk Fontaine's misfortune? Death sells. Is that my fault? The guy's dead. What's he care if we make a few bucks? I mean, if there is an upside to Kirk Fontaine's death, it's that the karma product line is hotter than ever. Albums, merchandising videos, for Christ's sake, they're even naming a street after the guy. Karma is hot. But they can't go on tour, can they? Tough break. We can go on tour. We can fill the void. Smashing watermelons can fill the karma void. 
But Karma did recently create quite an uproar by launching a tour of the rural Midwest, where their teenage fans were less likely to notice the inclusion of Kirk Fontaine's dead body in the band's stage lineup. Excuse me, excuse me. Uh, what did you think of the performance? Oh, Kirk Fontaine was awesome, man. Quality, dude, quality! You liked his performance? Oh, well, yeah. It didn't bother you that he's dead? Dead? Like how? He's dead. I thought he looked really stoned. He has no head. No, you mean he was lip syncing? He has no lips. Oh, man, what a ripoff! Hey, man, we got bone, dude. Oh. We're here with Smashing Watermelons. Why don't you guys introduce yourselves? Uh, Todd Big Mo Murphy, bass guitar. I'm Ralph West. I play the maracas and the xylophone. Uh, Biff Johnson, drums. Uh, I'm Skip. I play the guitar. I can also play the triangle. Wow. About how long have you all been playing together? Uh, about three years. Three years, that's a pretty long time. Uh, why don't you tell us about the early days? We started out playing cover versions of old Carpenter's tunes. Yeah, our first gig was at a laundromat. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Why did you choose to play the Carpenter's music? Uh, well, we had no instruments in the beginning. Uh, Ralph had ocarina and Biff had a couple of chopsticks. But, yeah. but besides, the Carpenter's Close to You is the only song Ralph here knew. So we started with that and it just kind of stuck. Man, we were poor in the beginning. Uh, we had to borrow our heroin needles from the Haitian guy next door. Yeah, <laughs> one time we lived for a whole week on a single box of macaroni and cheese. Cheese and macaroni? Man, what does it matter? There were empty boxes anyway. We had to eat the cardboard, man. It was rough. Seriously. So you've all been together for a pretty long time. Where did you get the name Smashing Watermelons? Uh, in the early going, we were really influenced by the comedian Gallagher. And he used to smash watermelons. Yeah, and we so, wanted to smash watermelons too, but we really couldn't afford it. So we would occasionally smash smaller fruit, but it really didn't add that much to our stage presentation. Right. And and uh, it got the instruments all messy. Yeah, and there, there really is no point to smashing a blueberry anyway, because it just, just doesn't get the full effect. Uh, I see. I don't uh, quite understand how you were influenced by Gallagher. Gallagher is a balding, middle-aged white comic. I'm a bit perplexed by the juxtaposition of the demographic profile of Gallagher's target audience and that of your artistic genre. You see? I told you. Ow. Um, let's talk about your recording contract. You're about to shoot your first video. Yeah, we still need a lead singer. Our old lead vocal is split on us after we got that gig at the laundromat. Yeah, accused us of going commercial. He's a jerk. I also play the tambourine. Auditions for the lead vocalist slot in Smashing Watermelons drew thousands of hopefuls from all over the world. Our cameras were on hand to record the historic event. Go ahead. Thank you. My name is Harvey Schlemmel. A little over 20 years ago, man, I thought I was had a gig at Woodstock. Didn't work out. I don't know why. Next. I'd like to do a little grunge tune for you that I wrote myself. It goes something like this. Hope you enjoy it. Well, they call me the incredible grunge man. Never taking a shower, excuse, never watching. Excuse me. Could you please take your hat off? And end the classes. All right, Ralph. Get your ass off the stage. I like it. 
we arranged an exclusive interview with Dirk Becker, the new lead vocalist for Smashing Watermelons. Just a sec, this usually works. Oh, wait, wait, sure. What was that? I said, uh, where's my smokes? Okay, Dirk, what got you interested in being the lead singer of a grunge band? I uh, he said he needed a job that didn't require a whole lot of talent. What were you doing before? I was in, in uh, he was unemployed. I was in, uh, <laughs> and before that, he was a personal injury lawyer. You were a personal injury attorney? I got, uh, yeah, but he, he couldn't deal with all the sleazy people in the field. I think fucking lost the phone. Oh, what did he say? I think he said aliens are stealing my underwear and trading them later for valuable prizes. What exactly does that mean? I think it means you better hurry up. Uh, we don't have much time left. Okay, Dirk, are you worried about the pressure, the alienation, the things that led Kurt Fontaine to kill himself? I think he said either freak patrol on target or Freemasons control the stock market. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure the interview is over. With their new lead singer, Smashing Watermelons produced their album's first music video. They gave us a sneak preview. <laughs> Dirk is, is that he's unconscious most of the time. Keeps him out of trouble, you know what I mean? The hard part is going to be getting this band noticed in the wake of all the free publicity from Kurt Fontaine's death. It did cost a young man his life. Well, yeah, but the cover of Newsweek, you can't buy that. What we need is a gimmick, right. something to get the band noticed. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that one of you should go out and kill yourself. Right. All I'm saying is, is that if one of you is feeling a little depressed, feeling hopeless, feeling like there's no way out of the spiral of misery that leads inexorably to death anyway, then why not end it all now? I mean, you'd be saving yourself a lot of trouble. And besides, you'd be doing something for your buddies your teammates. Uh -huh. Shut up, we need uh -huh. your vocals. Uh -huh. What we need is a volunteer. Someone who wouldn't affect the band's sound if he were to pass away. With their first video in the can, we caught up with Smashing Watermelons on their national tour in Chicago. Yeah, right. Chicago, the Windy City. Let's rock. Serious. Kind of depressing, though, isn't it, Ralph? All this urban blight? No, I'm not depressed. I've wanted to visit Chicago my whole life. And I guess you've got nothing left to live for. Yeah. Well, how do you guys feel about tonight's big show? Great. We're finally getting a chance to take our music to the people, man. Hey, man, with a live audience and they're get, uh, with the energy and the apathy and they're oh, giving fruit. some real fruit to, to smash. Yeah. yeah, and a mallet, just like Gallagher. All oh, right. Yeah, man. Look, boys, I bought you dinner at Maison the Feet. Oh, oh, no, 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 not you, Ralph, not you, Ralph. I brought you a special treat from Jack in the Box. There you go. Nice and rare, just the way you like it. 
Yeah, you excited about performing? Yeah, we're stoked, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're gonna smash some crew. We're gonna rock the house. Yeah, where's Ernie? Right here, right here, right here, right here. Listen, I'm, uh, there was a small electrical problem with the tambourine, but I fixed it for you, Ralph. Thanks, Ernie. No, no, no problem. problem, no problem. All right, listen, you guys ready to rock? Yeah! Oh, Come on! Let's do it! Hello, Cleveland! Yeah! That documentary was filmed just before the tragic deaths of all five members of Smashing Watermelons. The band members were apparently electrocuted by a short circuit in the wiring of an amplified tambourine used in their stage act. The mishap first claimed the life of founding band member Ralph West. The electricity then flowed to the other band members through the pools of spit, sweat, and fruit juices which soaked the stage. Chicago police are still investigating the strange circumstances which led to the band's untimely demise. Oh yeah! Well, I wake up in the morning and I want a juicy steak and so I cook it for a minute cause I know that's all it takes to make comedy in the rock, comedy in the rock, comedy in the raw. Maybe I shouldn't watch this show. Oh no, oh no. Maybe I'll become an Eskimo. Eskimo, Eskimo. Maybe I'll just watch my toenails grow. Maybe I'll just shut up and watch comedy in the rock. 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 Comedy Comedy in the raw. 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 Comedy in the raw.